Hi, this is Dr. Ray Naldo Hoson, director of the R.O. Hoson pep talk. My pep talk today is entitled Basic Rights in Patient Empowerment. I have a patient empowerment program in which I'd like to empower the lay people or patients to take control in the management of their health. I launched this pep talk on May 15, 2021 with the module on COVID-19. The second module was on patient empowerment. The third module was on patient management process. I am now on my fourth module, which is entitled Rights in Patient Empowerment. What I have in mind in my pep talk, which may run for three years, is to empower at least 30 persons with my family members and my patients as a priority. This is my key performance indicator. I hope you will be in my group of 30. The fourth module, which is entitled Rights in Patient Empowerment, has two parts basic rights and patient autonomy and advanced directives. For today, we will be uh, tackling for basic rights in patient empowerment. The empowerment objective is for the lay people to have an understanding of the basic rights in patient empowerment. The uh, World Health Organization defines patient empowerment as the process through which people gain greater control over decisions and actions affecting their health. The World Health Organization has identified four components as being fundamental to the process of patient empowerment. These are understanding their role, sufficient knowledge to be able to engage their healthcare providers, patient skills, and presence of a facilitating environment. In the WHO definition, rights in patient empowerment can be subsumed at the very least under understanding of the role. In a community of inquiry or survey that I conducted in June 2021 among 55 Filipino respondents, we agree that the patient empowerment can be translated in Filipino as pagpapalakas ng pasyente with the following four strategies or K4. Kaalaman, knowledge and understanding, kakayanan, capability, karapatan, rights, and kapangyarihan or self-determination. Karapatan means rights in patient empowerment. Before I go to the rights in patient empowerment, let me remind everybody that everyone has the right to health, which is part of human rights. Right to health means that, that the states or the countries have the legal obligation to promote the health of their citizens. The right to health has two components, freedom and entitlement. Freedom includes the right to control one's health and body, including sexual and reproductive freedom, and freedom from interference such as non-consensual medical treatment and experimentation. Entitlement includes access to adequate healthcare facilities and services. So rights in patient empowerment emanate from this human right on health, specifically on the freedom or right to gain greater control over decisions and actions affecting the health of lay people or patients. Every person has the right to make his own choices with regards to his health and health care. In the medical world, one of the principal 
ethical principles that has been established and being observed and practiced is patient autonomy. Patient autonomy means the right of competent adults to make informed decisions about their own medical care. This principle underlies, underlies the requirement to seek the consent or informed agreement of the patients before any investigation or treatment takes place. So for the uh, foremost right in patient empowerment is for everybody, physicians and healthcare providers, and even relatives included to respect patient autonomy. Again, to repeat, patient autonomy is the right of all competent adults to make informed decisions about their own medical care. There are two key words or phrases in the definition of patient autonomy, competent adults and informed decisions. Competent adults means conscious, coherent, and discerning adults. Informed decisions means a permission or no permission is granted by the competent adults after proper understanding of the purpose, options with benefit, risk, cost, and availability data analysis, and consequences of procedures to be undertaken. These two components or requirements must be fulfilled for patient autonomy to be ethically and legally binding. Patient autonomy should be observed when a patient is being managed by a physician in whatever setting, such as when consulting at the clinic, at the outpatient departments, or inside the hospital as a confined patient. Patient autonomy should also be respected when being managed by relatives or significant others. When being managed by a physician, patient autonomy should be respected before any paraclinical diagnostic procedure and or treatment procedure takes place. After the patient is properly advised, respecting patient autonomy can end up either in informed refusal or informed consent. With informed refusal, no paraclinical laboratory diagnostic procedure and or treatment procedure are executed. With informed consent, the agreed paraclinical diagnostic procedure and or treatment procedure are executed. To repeat, before informed refusal and informed consent are decided upon, the patient must have proper understanding of the purpose, options with benefit, risk, cost, availability, data analysis, and consequences of procedures to be undertaken. In medical practice, exercising patient autonomy is prominently seen in situations where terminally ill patients have to decide whether to have life-sustaining treatment or not. Whatever their decisions, the physicians will have to abide, thereby respecting patient autonomy. When being managed by relatives or significant others, especially during, during the terminally ill stage, the wish and decision of the competent adult patients should be respected as part of the right to autonomy. Aside from patient autonomy, the other rights in patient empowerment will include entit entitlements from physicians managing them and from hospitals and clinics serving them. The lay people or patients should know these entitlements so that they can demand as part of their strategies to gain greater control on decisions and actions affecting their health, particularly in terms of being recipients of quality and safe services. In my presentation of the other rights in patient empowerment, I will categorize them into patient entitlements from physicians, 
and patients' entitlements from hospitals and clinics. However, let me say that there will be overlaps with some similarities in both categories. Note also that I don't guarantee that I will be able to list all at the moment. Patients entitlement from physicians. Patients are entitled to choose a physician they want to manage them and call colorary to this, change a physician anytime without having to justify their decisions. Patients are entitled to have a second opinion from another physician and from other physicians with no limit and without having to justify their decisions. Patients are entitled to have quality services, patient-centered, compassionate care, equitable care with dignity and no discrimination, effective and efficient and timely services, holistic, well-integrated, and well-coordinated services, etc. Patients are entitled to have safe medical care with no undue harms being inflicted on them. Patients are entitled to have right to information related to their health concerns on diagnosis, paraclinical diagnostic procedures and results, treatment, prognosis, etc. Patients are entitled to have participation in care decisions with their physicians. They are also entitled to have informed consent, informed refusal without prejudice to continuing health care. Patients are entitled to have medical records of their medical consultations, such as physician notes and tape recordings of interactions. They are entitled also to keep their medical records from other physicians and other hospitals and clinics and for physicians not to get and keep them without giving back or giving a copy to the patients. Patients are entitled to have no undue long waiting time for medical consultation. As much as possible, there is an appointment time for the consultation. And if physicians not able to comply, they should forewarn and advise the patients. Patients are entitled to have privacy and confidentiality of the medical consultation. Patients are entitled to know the professional bill or fee or policy of charging prior to medical consultation. They are also entitled to complain about the care and services provided without fear of reprisal. Now let's go to patients' entitlement from hospitals and clinics. Note, there are posters entitled patients' rights and responsibilities in practically all hospitals and clinics as required by the Department of Health. These vary from hospitals to hospitals. They're not uniform. Below are some of my listing of the uh, patient's rights and responsibilities. All patients in hospitals and clinics are entitled to choose a hospital and clinic. They want to serve them and corollary to this change anytime without having to justify their decisions. They're also entitled to have quality and safe medical care in accordance with generally approved medical and hospital principles. And they should have patient safety program and the so-called safe hospital initiative. All patients should are entitled to have respect and dignity without discrimination, to have participation in care decisions with their physicians and other healthcare professionals, to have informed consent and informed refusal without prejudice 
to continuing healthcare, have a second opinion from alternate healthcare professionals of choice, be asked for consent for additional procedures to be done on them not included in the initial prescription of their attending physicians, be asked for consent or refusal to allow additional physicians to manage them beside their attending physicians. Have privacy and confidentiality of personal information subject to applicable laws. Have right of information related to their health concerns and services being done to them. Have right to medical records. Have rights to avail of the benefits and privileges in accordance with government regulations. They're also entitled to be billed accurately. So, this, so the patients will have to monitor their, the medications and procedures done. And also the patients are entitled to complain about the care and services provided without fear of reprisal. They're also entitled to be discharged from institution upon the request and after settlement of accounts. They're also entitled to be treated at the Department of Emergency Medicine or Emergency Room without initial deposit. That's the law. And then they're also entitled to refuse participation in medical research. So above, I have presented the list of patients' entitlements from physicians and also patients' entitlements from hospitals and clinics. As I said, there could be more that I may have missed. I will update once I recognize the missing ones. I use the word entitlement to mean patients having a legal or ethical right to have or obtain something from the physicians, hospitals, and clinics. At the same time, they have the right to expect physicians, hospitals, and clinics to act in a certain way that will promote or and facilitate quality and safe services to them. Knowing these entitlements will enable the patients to look for them, not to say demand, which redound to patient empowerment, which is gaining greater control on decisions and actions affecting their health. However, let me say that patients should be proactive aside from the expectation of these entitlements and rights, which may not flow naturally or smoothly to them. They carry a responsibility to make them happen. They should ask, and if needed, they should demand if they are not being given the entitlements. They have recourses if the rights and entitlements are not afforded them and worse are in violations. Here are some recourses that patients can do. Remind the physicians, the hospitals and the clinics. Change physicians, hospitals and clinics as indicated. Give feedback and hope for improvement of services. File a complaint and hope for improvement of services. Complaints can be filed with the hospital and clinic administration and or external monitoring agencies like the Professional Regulation Commission and or with the courts of law. And the best promoting and facilitating measure in seeking and getting the rights in patient empowerment to enable patients to gain greater control over decisions and actions affecting their health is to look around now, as early as now, for the right physician, the right hospital, and the right clinic. And once found, place them in the list of hotline numbers in the house or in your files. In case a physician, a hospital, or a clinic is tested to be undesirable, change right away. 
remember the first right after patient autonomy is that everybody can choose his position, hospital or clinic anytime without having to justify. So there you are, rights in patient empowerment. Maximize your knowledge, kaalaman on these rights. Maximize your capability, kakayanan in seeking for these rights. Lastly, maximize your self-determination or kapangyarihan in using the rights in gaining greater control over decisions and actions affecting your health. With that, I end my pep talk today, Basic Rights in Patient Empowerment. I hope I have empowered you, the lay people, to have a better understanding of the basic rights in patient empowerment. Thank you for your kind attention. Mabuhay kayong lahat.